everybody, my name is Abby. Welcome to the channel or welcome back if you've been here before. And today I'm going to talk about some frequently asked questions slash statements that vegans can get. I normally do makeup videos, so if you subscribe for that and you don't want to see this, just watch one of my other videos here. Um, I'm not going to do like the vegan type videos too, too often, but I may, like on Saturdays, I normally upload Monday through Friday, so, you know. But I've seen a few of these kinds of videos, not really specifically exactly like this one, but just some like or vegan content online, I should say, not just videos, where people are like kind of rude about these questions. And I just want to kind of address these questions in a way that's respectful and not rude or snarky or sarcastic, because I know a lot of the answers that people can get for these kind of questions are kind of rude so I just want to do kind of be nice about it and give you like straight answers and I know I get a lot of these questions myself and I'm sure if you're a vegan you do as well the, some people can in, and some people can intend these to be mean and some people are just genuinely curious um, so what spurred this was yesterday I I heard um, well I, w I met someone new in my fiance's family and they were just kind of asking me about it because I mean Especially where I live, if you live in like a more rural area and you're not like in a big city, people don't really know or are, um, are exposed to veganism. So if you are not vegan and you're interested, please keep watching. Um, I kind of wanted to put this out towards January just because of Veganuary. So I will leave links to that below if you're interested. Basically, a lot of people have... New Year's resolutions where they want to try being vegan just for their health in the new year and part of that is Veganuary so they will encourage people to post recipes and stuff to help you through just trying for a month to be vegan. Alright so let's just get right in to the questions. So number one question that I get is why? Why are you vegan? Why did you choose this? I mean my story kind of starts a little bit farther back in high school I watched some PETA video online of the slaughterhouse and stuff and I cried my eyes out because I like animals and I thought that was just horrible and so I like that day I went cold turkey excuse my <laughs> pun but I just kind of stopped eating meat and I didn't really do it right because I wasn't educated on it I didn't really take the time to learn about nutrition and things and I actually think that I had some kind of deficiency just because Basically, I just ate what I ate before, but just minus meat and dairy, and that wasn't really healthy, so you just, yeah, I'll talk about that kind of stuff later, but, and then I eventually, we went on a trip or something, and I didn't bring enough, like, food for myself, and where we were staying, it was actually on a military base, they didn't have many options, um, like, as far as restaurants and stuff, so... I had to give in. I was so hungry and I ate a chicken sandwich and yeah, I felt bad about it, but I was just like, yeah, I can't do this until I'm older and have my own money. But then more recently, about two, two and a half years ago, I, I was working at McDonald's at the time and then I was like, you know, if you work somewhere that serves meat, it's going to be a little bit hard because you get free food, you know? So when, once I quit there, I went fully vegan. I'm actually started working at a grocery store, so I got a discount on food. And part of the reason that I did that was because I noticed I have always had really, really bad cystic acne. I've been through treatments from the dermatologist. I even went through Accutane, and it didn't... Accutane helped some, but not totally. And I noticed the first little bit that I was vegan, my acne cleared up a lot. And so I realized that I was actually dairy that was causing it. So the second time I was like, well, you know, I'm just going to try wean myself off of dairy first and, you know, see how that goes. And my acne did clear up. So I was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and go fully vegan. And I did. And being vegan is, I'm not like trying to preach about like, you know, this to you, but if you're interested, there are resources online. Uh, my favorite channel is bite-sized vegan. I'll link her down below. She doesn't do videos really that much anymore, but she has a really great informational videos about health and environmental impacts of uh, being vegan. So if you're interested, check her out. But there's just numerous reasons, uh, like for health and of course because of the animals and for the environment that I choose to be vegan. So number two is how do you do it? How do you stay vegan? So 
Uh, basically, I if I think about eating something, well, first of all, <laughs> if I consume dairy, even on accident, just a little bit, it absolutely destroys my digestive system. I'm sure you can imagine what happens um, if you're lactose intolerant, you know, anyways. But it's after so long of not eating dairy or something, um, your body just develops an intolerance for it and mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't feel good when you eat it again and then I get breakouts and it's just not fun. So that's what keeps me from eating dairy. Um, and then I just the I just don't feel the need to eat meat anymore. I don't have you know, I have trained my body to not need meat. Because I get nutrition from elsewhere, so I just, I don't need it, so I don't think about it. Number three, this is, I should have put this as number one, but I thought that the why would be good first. Um, but, where do you get your protein? So, I mean, people don't realize this, and I, I totally understand, like, at first I thought about it. Um, when I first tried to be vegan, I was like, vegan sources of protein, and you know, I started searching. But there's... Gosh, you can eat beans, nuts, peas, um, seeds, um, even like almond milk, soy milk, stuff like that is fortified with protein. Um, I like tofu, some people don't, just personal preference. They have faux meats, which are fortified with protein, and you can get protein powders and protein bars. So, it is actually very, very, extremely, extremely rare for someone to be protein deficient. Like, you would have to pretty much only eat, I don't even know, like, if all you ate was spinach or something, I mean, I mean maybe after, like, years, but, yeah, you don't need as much protein as you think you do. Like, the average adult only needs about 20 to 30 grams, and that's not much at all. Like, there, one vegan burger can have up to 20 grams by itself, so. And then, you know, peanut butter and stuff like that is usually how I eat it. Um, you don't... It can get kind of expensive. I'll talk about that later too, but it can get kind of expensive to eat like the fake meat and stuff all the time. Number four, how do you make sure you get enough nutrients or is vegan healthy? Um, basically, just to make sure that you get all the necessary nutrients, you want to make sure that you are eating a lot of green vegetables. So like spinach, kale, um, romaine lettuce, stuff like that is going to be broccoli. is more fortified with nutrients. Um, than like other vegetables are and basically just you want to make sure that your food is multicolored so like you want to eat your your red berries um, you know green vegetables carrots um, just a whole variety of fruits and vegetables to make sure that you're getting the right nutrients and um, of course you can always you know just to be extra safe take a multivitamin supplement or even some Protein powders, like the Vega protein powder, has a lot of nutrients in it. Um, so I, when I first started being vegan, I just wanted to make sure that I got on necessary nutrients because I was a little bit younger. So I would put a little bit of the Vega protein powder in like a, a smoothie or something with like bananas and spinach and um, berries of some sort. So it's really not that difficult to get a bunch of nutrients because people don't realize, but you know when you're younger, <laughs> Your parents and you know school kind of tells you like, oh, eat your vegetables so you be healthy. But then it's like when you grow up and you're like, oh, I only eat vegetables. People are like, wait, is that healthy? <laughs> yeah, it is. Vegetables are very healthy for you. Uh, number five is being vegan expensive. Honestly, this one, I'm not gonna lie about this. This is totally up to where you live. There, sorry, there's something outside. It was like going across. It looked like an animal, but it was aloof. <laughs> But this totally depends on the area of the country that you're in and what your diet preferences are. So, I know this really directly changed my diet because I moved kind of across the country recently and then moved back and the grocery prices were astronomical there compared to where I live now. So, some places produce is really expensive and it's really sad that it is that way. I mean, if you live like along the coastal region, then it might not be so expensive just because it's easier to get access to. But if you live a little bit farther inland or maybe even away from a major highway, then it can get more expensive. So, I mean, if you, so if you say you only eat like rice, potatoes, vegetables, you know, natural, whole food 
things, not the processed stuff, then it may be a little bit cheaper than if you try to use like the vegan replacements, like the fake cheeses, the fake meats, and yeah, so like the fake meats are really, really expensive, like compared to actual meat. I mean, at the grocery store, I'll say, I mean, like if you get a bag of chicken nuggets, the, the fake chicken nuggets, of course, they're about the same price as you would pay at a restaurant, but that's not really sustainable for you, um, you know, price-wise, if you're eating them at home for every meal, you know. Um, so a great resource if you're worried about food being expensive is Cheap Lazy Vegan. She is amazing. I've been watching her channel for a while. She even did a challenge where she spent $20, or I think it, maybe it was 20 pounds because she lived in the UK at that time, but... She went to the store and bought $20 worth of food and it lasted her breakfast, lunch, and dinner for an entire week. So it is definitely possible to be vegan on a tight budget, but it just depends on your personal preference. If you want to eat the junk food like Oreos and the sweet chili Doritos and stuff, or if you just want to stick with fruits and vegetables. And number six, this one, I get this sometimes, not a lot. It's, um... So you're vegan, do you eat eggs, do you eat fish, um, you know, stuff like that, and the answer is no. If it's, if it's an animal product or comes, like, derived from an animal, even though it may not be the animal itself, like, in, in the case of eggs, then no, most vegans will, will not eat, um, you know, eggs, fish. I even avoid honey and gelatin because honey is derived from bees. I mean, if it's... Honey and eggs are a hot topic in the vegan world because they can both either they're really sustainably sourced or they're just not. So if you're buying them at a grocery store, they're not going to be, you know, ethically and sustainably sourced. Um, even if you buy cage-free eggs, the hens are still in in horrible conditions. Um, so I'm not going to get into that in this video, but um, and but if you know, like my dad and my stepmom raise the chickens and they have eggs, but I still wouldn't eat them just because I don't need to. But, you know, if I wanted to, then I, I might. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so if I feel like I need to eat eggs for whatever reason, then I would prefer to get them from them, of course. But since I am vegan, I don't, I've already replaced the protein. And actually, eggs don't have that much protein in them anyways. But, like, honey, if it's locally sourced and, you know... I don't know how to say, if a good beekeeper will know how much honey that they can use from the bees and how much they need to leave, because honey is a food source for the bees, and if we're just taking it, then we're literally starving the bees, and that's not cool, so, um, it just, it depends on personal preference on that, some vegans eat honey, some don't, um, I know I won't, like, actively go and buy a bottle of honey and put it on stuff, but, like, if I buy something and I misread the ingredients and it's got honey in it, I'm not gonna make that big of a deal and gelatin. So gelatin is actually made from bone, some part of the animal bone. I don't want to say exactly what it is just because I don't want to give you wrong information. I can't remember what the name of it's called, but basically it's just um, part of like pig and I think just pig bones that makes it, you know, kind of gelatinous as the name suggests. So, um, you know, most vegans try to, try to avoid gelatin. And number seven, so, like, what do you eat? Um, so I eat a lot of stuff. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I post some pictures of it. There are so many other Instagram accounts. There's YouTube channels where they, they show what they eat in a day. Just a lot of stuff. I mean, I like burgers, pizza, wings, fries. Pretty much anything that you eat, like, normally can be made vegan nowadays. There's a replacement for everything now. And they even, there is even a vegan egg scramble. There was, they had one a while ago and now they just came out with a new one. So I want to try the new one. I didn't really like the first one, but, but there is a replacement for it and there's replacements for vegan cheeses and stuff that have really come a long way in the time that I've been vegan. And when I first went vegan in high school, they were gross, disgusting. I would get that away from me, but now they're really good. So I'm really happy that, you know, the technological advancements are coming along and that they're producing better products. Number eight, this is not one that I get in person, but um, online, yes, vegans poop a lot because meat and dairy plug you up and vegetables are fibrous. 
And at number nine, um, so what restaurants do you eat at? So uh, there are a few chain restaurants that I will, that are pretty safe to go to, um, that are kind of all over the country, you know, that I could feasibly eat at or whatever. Um, the first one that comes to mind is Chipotle, of course. So if you love Chipotle, you can still go there. They have beans, and they do have a tofu um, type dish, but I actually don't like it myself, but some people do. Then you can just get it with guacamole instead of like sour cream and cheese. Um, and my personal favorite restaurant is Noodles & Company. They have a dish called a Japanese pan noodles. They also have some type of, I think they have a pad thai that's vegan. And then they also have a, um, like just a normal spaghetti with marinara sauce that you can ask them to leave off the cheese with. And Taco Bell, um, there was a fiasco a little while ago where they started putting dairy in their rice for whatever reason, but enough people complained they stopped doing that. So you can get like a seven layer burrito and ask them to hold the cheese and the sour cream. And at Taco Bell you can also, if you have anything that has the ground meat, you can ask them to substitute that for refried beans. And at Chick-fil-A, so I'll eat their waffle fries. They also have a really good kale salad that has like the sweet glaze on it. It's so good. And Chinese places are pretty good too. You can get like just the vegetable, um, what's that stuff called? Like chow mein or lo mein. Or sometimes they'll do like broccoli with garlic sauce. Just ask them to make sure that there's no meat products or eggs in, you know, in their ingredients. And like sushi places are pretty easy to go to just because you can... You can actually see in the thing if it's got meat in it or not. Um, and then there are, of course, mom and pop little smaller restaurants around the country that are, you know, maybe they have a few vegan offerings. Maybe they're half vegan, half vegetarian or whatever, but just a good place to go to if you're looking for vegan restaurants or if you're wanting to dine out with a friend or somebody who is vegan. Go to happycow.net and you can search by your area and it'll show you like a map of all the places that have vegan offerings or places that are completely vegan around you. And I've got two more for you. So these are probably the most commonly asked questions I think behind um, where do you get your protein at. So this next one I'm going to try, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to try to not be rude and sarcastic because it can kind of come off that way. But the question is that why are vegans so pushy or why do they force their beliefs on people? This is a tough one to address. Um, so bear with me. Um, I actually wrote it down, like what I want to say about it, so I don't like try to go off on a tangent. Um, just because as a vegan, I can kind of get in the wrong mindset about that. But I need to also understand, and other vegans do need to understand that the general population who aren't vegans are, you know, haven't been. I'm just gonna go into my answer. <laughs> Um, so I actually I don't think that very many vegans do this intentionally to try to force their beliefs on people. Um, it just kind of seems that way because the ones who do that are the loudest. Um, it's also because that people in general aren't used to veganism. It's, it's not a new thing, but it's kind of gained a lot more popularity with the involvement of social media in the last couple years. I mean, it's totally different from how people were raised. I know like I never even considered, like, I didn't know anybody who was vegetarian or vegan or anything when I was growing up. And it's also that people are conditioned by the media and school and everything to believe that meat is perfectly normal and, you know, that's how you've been raised and lived your whole life. So when somebody comes along and challenges that, you can kind of get defensive, and I understand. Politicians and big media outlets are actually paid off by the meat and dairy industries. So that's why, like in schools, you see those got milk posters, even though milk is actually not healthy for you in the slightest, just because they get paid by, you know, big dairy, big, <laughs> you know, big agriculture. But if you kind of flip this around and just pretend for a moment that you are vegan and that you only eat plants and things. And just look around, you know, turn on the radio, turn on the TV, um, scroll through the ads on like Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and see like how much propaganda there is for meat and dairy. I can't like, even when I went to New York, like where I live now, there's not many like billboards and I go walk around and see, but I went to New York City and 
a ton of like they weren't like trying to advertise beauty related stuff they were trying to advertise meat so you know it's nothing to flip to the channels and see Orbeez we have the meats you know and in nothing about veganism it's because it's what you've been conditioned to believe and then when somebody tries to challenge that or you know suggest that it may be wrong you know it kind of seems like they're being pushy but and even like also like I said a second ago if you flip that around how much are vegans getting you know meat and dairy pushed onto them you know I like I can't tell you how many times that I've told somebody that I'm vegan and or like it's just kind of comes up like I, I try not to be that person that brings up that I'm vegan in every conversation but you know it can happen sometimes when wearing like a vegan shirt like I am today or just something and they're like like are you sure Actually, this ties into the next question too but they're like here eat this thing it won't matter you know or eat this cheeseburger or whatever like it won't hurt you or whatever it will but you know that's not the point so yeah, hopefully that I did that question justice and hopefully that kind of explained a little bit for you that the vegans who push their beliefs aren't in the majority and we can also kind of get defensive too in that case because because we have this other knowledge or this other experience base than other people do and then it kind of there's this back and forth of you know meat and dairy versus being vegan. And last question, number 11, I'm sure I'm going to get like 80,000 of these comments. Um, bacon, do you miss bacon? Actually, no, I don't. Um, I So I've been vegan for over two years, and the other day my mom cooked, well, she was cooking something, and I smelled it. I knew it was meat, but I, I couldn't place my finger on it, like what it was. And then I came downstairs, and I looked, and it was bacon, and I was like, wow. I totally have lost like the scent memory for bacon now because I didn't know what the heck that was cooking but and I'm gonna this is another thing I'll be completely totally honest with you is some vegans will lie their teeth off about this kind of thing but I actually do occasionally get a craving for meat like steak or pork chop or something when it's cooking like I'll smell it and just because for 20 years of my life, that's what I ate, that's what I did. You know, if you do something, like if you smoke for 20 years and then you quit for a little while, you're going to be still craving cigarettes, you know. But, I mean, hopefully, just for my sanity, that that will kind of go away as time progresses. But, yeah, I do still get cravings for meat occasionally, and I don't ever act on them. But, yeah, that's the honest truth. <laughs> So there you go, I hope that was helpful or informative, um, or if you learned anything new, um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. And please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, especially if you're interested in vegan makeup and beauty. And let me know what other kind of videos you'd like to see if you have any other suggestions. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.